humanity again. The first war began when Medivh, the last guardian of Tirisfall, opened the Dark Portal and unleashed the Orcish Horde upon Azeroth. While he paid for his actions with his life, Medivh's spirit could not rest. Returning to atone for his past, he guided a new generation of heroes against the Burning Legion. Now, he brings his wisdom and power to the Nexus, ready to take his place amongst legends. Medivh is a calculating ranged specialist who focuses on supporting his team with strong utility spells. Medivh's trait is Raven Form. Instead of mounting, Medivh transforms into a raven, allowing him to fly and see over terrain. While in Raven Form, Medivh is invulnerable and cannot be targeted. His first basic ability, Arcane Rift, sends a small magical shockwave along the ground, damaging all enemies in its path. If Arcane Rift hits an enemy hero, its cooldown is greatly reduced. Next up is Force of Will. Medivh grants an ally the protected status, shielding them from all damage for a short period of time. Medivh's last basic ability is Portal. When cast, he places two linked portals onto the battleground, one at his location and the other one at the target point. Medivh and his teammates can travel between the portals at will. Medivh's first heroic ability is Polybomb. This spell turns an enemy hero into a flying sheep, silencing them and suppressing their attacks. Once the effect expires, it will spread to other enemy heroes within range. There's no limit to how many times Polybomb can chain between your opponents. Another lockdown option for Medivh is Leyline Seal. After a short windup, Medivh launches a slow moving wave that travels in a straight line. Any enemy heroes caught in the spell's path will be trapped in stasis for a few crucial seconds. Medivh's greatest strength is his ability to set up amazing plays. At level one, the portal mastery talent allows Medivh to control the placement of both his portals. Use this to set up incredible options for engaging and escaping the opposing team. Because Medivh's Raven form is invulnerable, he can safely scout the enemy team while in flight. They will be unable to stop you from reporting everything you see back to your allies. A well-timed force of will can save an ally's life and turn the tide of battle. Watch your opponents closely and absorb the most damaging attacks directed at your team. Facing a team that likes to group up, Polybomb might be the choice for you. Wait for that key moment, then cast Polybomb on the target in the middle of the pack. Your opponents will be forced to spread out to avoid being polymorph, allowing your team a chance to pick them off one at a time. Leyline Seal is a little riskier to use, but it has amazing setup potential. Use it to place closely gathered opponents in stasis, giving your team time to surround them. Enemies can dodge Leyline Seal if they see it coming, so cast it carefully to trap as many as possible. As the last guardian, Medivh guides his allies to victory by reading his enemies and controlling the flow of battle. Make sure to leave us a comment and subscribe to Heroes of the Storm on YouTube, and we'll see you in the Nexus. Since time immemorial, Azeroth has been guided by the Dragonflights, each granted a sacred task to preserve a fundamental aspect of the world. Kronormu, or Chromie to her friends, may appear to be a friendly yet distracted gnome, but in truth, she is a bronze dragon and an ardent defender of time. Now her charge to preserve history has brought her into the conflux of time and space known only as the Nexus. 
Chromie is a fragile yet devastating artillery assassin that traps her foes and eliminates them from afar. First up is her trait, Time Walker. As a master of the timeways, Chromie gains talents and abilities one level ahead of other heroes. Her first basic ability is Sand Blast. With a wave of her hands, Chromie manifests a ball of sand and fires it as a long-range projectile that damages the first enemy hero it hits. Sand Blast only hits enemy heroes and will pass through anything else. Don't let Chromie's appearance fool you. Her W ability, Dragon's Breath, unleashes her true bronze dragon nature, letting loose a deadly barrage on a target area. Dragon's Breath does not provide enemies an area of effect indicator for the incoming damage, leaving them completely unaware of how it will impact. Chromie's final basic ability creates a time trap. Once armed, any enemy hero that touches this inconspicuous hourglass is frozen in stasis for a short period. If you're looking to control the flow of battle, try out Slowing Sands. Activating this heroic creates a zone of whirling sand that will slow enemies. The sand vortex lasts until Chromie cancels the ability or runs out of mana. The longer Slowing Sands is activated, the stronger its slowing effect will become. Chromie's second heroic is Temporal Loop. With a little twist in time, she binds an enemy hero to a location. No matter how far they try to run, after a short delay, they always return to the location they were bound to. Chromie's Time Walker trait is relatively straightforward, but pay extra attention when your team hits level 9. Her early heroic can grant your team an unexpected advantage. Sand Blast hits like a truck, but her wind-up animation provides a visual tell that it's coming. If you want to land hits, try casting outside the enemy's vision range. Fire from behind fort walls and within bushes to catch the enemy off guard. And don't forget to use choke points to secure takedowns. Since Dragon's Breath doesn't leave an area of effect indicator, it can be difficult for the enemy to predict where it's going to land. Use this to your advantage. Cast it in your enemy's range of vision and watch them scramble. And if you see an enemy impaired by a stun or slow, that's a perfect time to call down the Dragon's Fury. Time Trap has a multitude of uses, and creativity with your trap placement is key. Try catching ambushers hiding in bushes, or even preventing heroes from slinking away into the shadows. Use it to lock an enemy in stasis, buying Chromie some time to escape, or to set up an aggressive assault, unleashing all of her abilities in a devastating combo. Chromie's heroics offer two very different options. Slowing Sands provides strong area denial, encouraging enemies to avoid a location entirely. Pay close attention to where you cast it, as the longer the sands stay in place, the greater the slowing effect it provides. Clever use of the slowing twister can allow Chromie and her team to mop up opponents quickly. Temporal Loop's strength lies in its ability to force a player back to a location. Facing a slippery opponent you want to separate from the group? Use Temporal Loop to give your team time to set up an ambush and eliminate them, or force them into a trap to take them out of the game for a few precious seconds. Despite Chromie's size, she's a force to be reckoned with, and her grand debut in the Nexus is just a matter of time. Got any feedback you'd like to share? Make sure to leave us a comment below and subscribe to Heroes of the Storm. Hello, hello, good evening, HOTS fans. Thank you for joining us in this Division D West quarterfinals between Creepy Crawler Spiders versus Cheese Counter Skills. First map we are going to is surprise, surprise, Sky Temple. I have yet to cast a match with Sky Temple. I am expecting something special here from Creepy Crawler Spider since they picked this map. Well, let's go find out what they will pick, because here we go to the draft. Okay, on the left side, the blue team, we have Cheese Counter Skills. First pick, first ban, and the first ban goes to the Haka. And Falstaff's first ban on the right side, so that goes the 
two globals. In a Falstad ban, I wonder if they are expecting to do a certain strategy that will remain nameless. I wonder if Blue Team is going to pick up on it. We will see. Who are they going to ban for their second ban? They're thinking about it, that's for sure. Sylvanas, okay. So no shutting down the, the structures. That's a good thing, especially in this very big map. What is Red Team going to ban now? We will see. Brightwing and Brightwing Deathwing. Interesting. 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 He can be a global too, so two global bands by the red team. What are they going to pick as the first pick? What is going to be the first pick worthy for this map? Jana. Not surprised. Jana is first pick worthy in any map. All right, here we go. What is red team going to plan for this very least used map? I've yet to see gray main. Okay. Lots and lots of damage. And Anduin um, for either light bomb or the healing bubble. I know what I would pick on this map. Let's see. What is the blue team going to counter? They need some damage and offlane. Vala and Lucio. Okay. Interesting. I guess Lucio for the speed boost to boost them around the map. I guess, and then Vala burst him down. I'm going to guess there's going to be an auto attack. Okay. What are the last bands? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Gul'dan. Okay. So no horrify. I'm liking the um, red team's bands so far. Blue team, who is your last ban? New break. Okay. So no beetles. No buggies. All right, here we go. It's coming down. What is their plan for this map? These next two picks will be a telltale sign. Blaze and Muradin. Okay. Looks like a standard comp so far. And Tychus and Ragnaros. Okay. Um... Uh, <laughs> I'm starting to like the blue team's draft now. And Lenara. Okay, so they're doing a standard draft all around. Nothing special. They just have a special map. I kind of like the blue draft. I, I'm going to guess Ragnaros is going to go Lava Wave. This is a really good Lava Wave map. They'll, it'll get the um, waves clear when you're not there and... And the whole push. Push the lights. I, I, I would pick Lava Wave on this one. We'll see what he gets in level 10. Okay, look at this. It's on the right side, Creepy Crawl of Spiders has nice portrait synergy. They get style points already. 
I like it. Go CCS. I can say that because they're both CCS, so I have no favoritism. Go CCS. Just like Chad is saying, let's go CCS. Now, as Ken wants to see some Gouda games, reference to the cheese. No cheese in this game, though, other than the title. All right, here we go. Game one of this Division D West quarterfinals, CCS versus CCS. And on the left side, CCS, um, we have the Cheese Counter Skill, the blue team. We have Dark Horse and Vala, Ticker on Ragnaros, Seven on Lucio, Groove Champ on Tychus, Honestly on Jana. And on the right side, we have Osprey on Muradin, Dib on Lunara, Cordana on Greymane, Primera Metallo on Blaze, and Auxilium on Enduin. Uh, yeah, you are correct, Varel. I uh, used to be on it. Oh, look! Blue team is cheesing. They are cheesing on the bottom. Nice! And red team went to get the eye, so they're going to get some nice damage. They didn't cry. Oh, Ragnaros is so low. If anyone catches up to him, he could be in trouble. Oh, it's low by Blades! And Blades goes in! Oh, he's a guy just a little too far. And they get the one tower. They did get one tower, but Blaze had... I mean, Ragnaros has to heart back. All right, so they traded one tower for the eye. Okay. So, he experiences still pretty even. Everyone picked up the... The little minions on their way to their respective lanes. And Lenara is staying on the bottom. So that he's getting soaked there. Yep, I remember. I remember. We were together for a while. And here's the camps. And I think Red Team is going to get it first. Because, you know, Greymane is Camp Supreme there. Probably the only person who can get it faster would be um, Hugger. All right, so top lane. Oh, nice sidestep. Ragnaros has a little bit of tight um, wave clear because Blaze took the eye back. We got a nice fight on the bottom. Let's try and take out the siege camps. Someone's going to have to get the mid soak. They're losing soak there. Those little experience bubbles are turning to the small ones. Who team's doing a good job pushing back. I think red team's going to be really scary when they hit tens. Greyman and Lenara, that's so much burst damage. Alright, Blaze is double soaking. They, he was able to get the uh, experience. Dominions. Blaze pushed in a little bit, but Blaze is going to pick up the minions there. The so experience is still pretty even. Blue team's getting camps. Red team's are getting camps. No one cares about the bottom now. All right. Getting a little damage on top. Everyone's just poking, poking, poking. Nobody wants to force a fight. Not until objectives are up. Blue team got their camps first. Red team's about to finish theirs. Now picked up some extra silk on the bottom, so they got a slight experience lead. Murder's looking for. Oh, he was scouted out. Nice flashlight by Joanna. All right, so blue team's first on point in the middle. No one's on top. Red team's going top. They're going to try to gank Ragnaros, but he's okay. So they're going to trade. Okay. Red goes top. Blue goes middle. Lucio's getting experience on the bottom. The red team's got a camp here. They're going to get mad value up top. Alright, is Brad going to come up here and use his dirt trait? Ball has got 24 on... Oh yeah, we didn't talk about... Talents. Creed of the Hunter, Sulfurus, Solorendo, Best Advantage, Zeal of Glare, Power Shield, Adrenaline Stimpak, Viciousness, Sentinel Wisp, and Third Wind. 
All right. Blue team is going in. So is red team. Merton jumps in. Volans is getting stacks. She just wants stacks. She doesn't care. Doesn't care about the kill. Keep him alive. Oh, nice pull. Oh, and blue team chases the red team away. That's because Lenaro is busy double soaking. She's getting mad value experience. Blue team got all of the mid, and red team got most of the top. Lenaro's playing it safe. Gonna check out. He sees him because that nice whiff. Blaze is pushing. He wants to the top. Rag's gotta. I don't think Rag will kill him, but Blaze. I don't think we'll get the top for it yet. Not yet, anyway. All right. There's no hasn't been any team fights. There's a little skirmish up top, but. Nothing big happening. We're all playing it safe. Red team's got an early lead. Nice flashlight by Joe. Nice job. No face checking here. All right. Ragnos finished his quest. Ball is still a little behind on hers. Only got 31, but slowly scaling. Rag and Blaze. Bouncing around top and middle. Joe! Oh no, Joe! Joe is rooted! Oh! Oh! First blood! Five minutes, 40 seconds. There was a first blood. Goes to Joe. I tell you, Red Team's got so much burst. And they got tens now. Okay, Haymaker, Leaping Strike, go for the throat. Bunker and Light Bomb. Red team is scary. Blue team is about to get theirs. Alright, here we go. We got Blessed Shield. There it is. Lava Wave. Lava Wave is going to extend the game. High five, drill, and main of vengeance. Alright. He's waiting on the Lava Wave. Oh, no! It takes that Lucio! Oh, no healer. They need to back up. They need to back up. This lava wave clears the bottom lane, but other than that, I think he was just trying to catch some of the red team off guard. All right, here's the first four of the game. Half a level lead for red team. Rags back top, you're trying to clear. Blue team is just trying to get experience. If you're down on structures, you need to push the mid to get something there. All is quiet on the eastern front. Yep. They know you're there because you got the whip. Oh, the whip just went away, but they know they started it. They know they started it. So here they come. So they're backing off. Oh, that wisp is so nasty. Okay, be careful, Lucio. All right. Blaze is clearing the top. Red team's looking for a flank. Lenora is going to be so annoying. What are you going to do? Yeah, blue team's got to back off because they have no structure here. And they, uh, red team's got a town lead. Red team's looking. They're fighting. They're going in. Murden jumps in. Free camp for the red team. Yeah, they steal it. Oh. And are they going to boss? I thought they are going to go boss. Nope. They're playing safe. No boss though. Rag had to use his trait. Try to save the top fort. He's, doing, he's using everything on top. Trait and lava wave. Alright. Five man on bottom for the blue team. They're looking for, for someone to out of position. 
Oh, no chill! Too much chill! Can they get me? Rain of Vengeance gets- Oh! Pulled by Anduin! Murdered, it's okay! Gray Man goes in! Blades with a star and Vala! Oh! Light bomb! Put the poker's there! Linda takes out Vala! Oh no! Which started as a 5v3 turning to a 4v5! Stunned by Blaze! Oh! Blaze is doing work! Oh! Gray Man finishes it off! Takes out of Joanna! Oh! Nice! Nice, we turn kills. I mean, I return kills to turn on the red team. They got a solid one and a half level lead, and they're going to get the objectives top and bottom. Oh no. All right, this fort is gone. Red team's got all the forts of the blue team. Oh, Rag, don't face check. Don't face check. Oh, no. Oh, Rag, what are you doing? Oh, you're not a tank. Oh, Lucio with the save. Oh, nice. Nice, Lucio with the save. Red team could have gotten the kill, but I guess they didn't know where the rest of the team was. Oh, my gosh. I thought Rag was so dead there. I guess they didn't want to try it since they had two people in the other lanes. They didn't want a, a 5v3, even though I think they could have still gotten the kill. We just gray main there. Okay, well, that's blue team fighting back. They got one fourth, but um, red team is pushing damage on keep. Lava Way is going to extend it, but Blaze doesn't care. He just won't have any minions for a couple seconds. All right. Ooh, boss call with the town lead, level lead. Here they come. They know they're coming. Light bomb, stun. Oh, there goes. Rag, yeah! Oh, they got the counter coming out, and the boss stuns Joe! Oh, Joe goes down! Oh! oh. Bunker, get in the bunker! Oh! Murden, Murden with the peel! Murden with the peel! Oh! Tychus! Oh, can he so low? Murden! Oh, now it went oh, so low, but Tychus was low too! Okay, three for two, but everyone is low, so... Oh my gosh. I thought Red Team was going to clean up when they killed the healer in the tank, but they were low. That was actually nice defense by the blue team. Keep him from the boss. Which gives the blue team a chance to get their 16s. Now, even town lead again, and red team is gonna wait. Nope, they're gonna go and take it. All right, two camps of both teams. Big fight in the middle. There we go. Blue team's first on the objective. They might get the mid fort. Nice job by blue team. But they are one and a half levels behind. Red team is just going to clear and just take the bottom. They're going to trade. Trading is good for the red team because they have structural advantage. But <laughs> blue team has lava life. Going to help clear this up. But the red team. Still has a bigger camp because they had some clear. Here comes Ragnaros. He needs to be careful. Is blue team going to force it? I like this. I like this push gank. Yeah, Rag. Oh, Rag is... Oh, Rag. Yeah, okay. They're... Interesting. Interesting. Red team is just going to play the macro game. They're not going to force a fight unless they have to. They say, we're up. Why well, throw the fight? The so blue team's going to say, okay, we're going to force a fight. We will force a fight. 
We will take a pause or get a fight. Here we go. Lunar is still a little bit behind. Nice stun. Vala, light bomb. Oh, Blaze and Murden jumps in. They're all on the boss. There's the bunkers out. They're ready to stand on the point. But Gray Man goes down. Murden goes down. Oh, Lunar goes down. But they lose the healer. Blue team gets it. Oh, that's it. This. Oh, can they get? Can they get him? Vala wants him. Oh, vaults in, but not enough. Oh, what a fight. Can they push it? Can they They need to get at least the keep. Joe's ready there. Joe's there. Rag has to clear. Rag has to clear. He'll, he'll get double lava wave in half a level. Rag is prepping the top. I guess lava wave is going to go middle. Blue team needs to get a keep. But Anwin can save the day. It's Anduin. All right, there's a love wave in the middle. Objectives up, but they don't care. Are they going to push some more? Nope, they're going to back up. Rags getting more things up top. Blue team's getting the camps. They got 13 seconds. Got nothing else to do. Might as well get camps. Left one there though. I figured they want the five man up top. Rag is trying to clear some vision. Alright, here we go. Blue's got a camp in the on the bottom though. Drill is dropped. Nice stun by Meriden, but Tychus could be told Root misses. Red team pushes off the point. Is Rag going to use his trait? Oh, Blaze goes in, but he's okay. Oh, Meriden jumps on Lucia, pounds it up. Light bomb, but there's the bunker. Get in the bunker. Meriden's in the bunker. Oh, none is stun. Lucia down. Ragnar is down. Oh, the bunker was clutch. Oh, Grey Mane wants more. Murden jumps in. Lenar is low. Oh, Joe takes out Grey Mane. Oh, Tekus takes out Blaze. Fala takes out Lenar to turn. To turn. Oh my gosh, I thought Blue Team Hair was dead. Oh, but Vala and Joe anchored it. Joe says, I am Joe. You are not crossing this line. And Vala was just hammering him. Only 100 on her stacks, but enough. That was enough. Oh my gosh. What a fight. Again, Andwin is the lone the lone survivor. I guess Vala and Joe's not enough to push this top fort. Alright, but they got a camp though. They have a camp. And they got Lava Wave. They got Lava Wave. Alright. Top fort gone. Are they gonna... Push mid fort? Nope. They're gonna camps. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I murdered in 10. The Haymaker, I guess he wanted to try and knock someone out. In the top fight in the top, he knocked Lucio out, but I mean, uh, Lucio just runs right back in. Yeah, you know, a lot of times Murden was low and had to run away. If he had Avatar, that would have um, let him stay there a little longer. But I tell you, that bunker up top was clutch. I thought there was that was going to win it. Oh, they wanted Ragnaros, but. They saw the rest of the blue team. All right, double objective. Double objective. Blue team's on it first. And they have a cap on top. They got to clear the... I guess they're going to leave the camp. There goes Lava Wave on the bottom. Blue team is not going to force the fight because Vala is up top. 
Blue team is just playing Ring Around the Rosie. I love it. <laughs> they hit Envision, waited for red team to rotate to ball up top, and went back down to bottom. Oh, the macro calls on the blue team. The macro calls, nice. And they so they got the last structure. Blue team, oh yeah, red team has to force a fight because ball's back up top. Ball's back up top. They are playing Ring Around the Rosie. Red team doesn't know what to do. They gotta force a fight, or they're gonna get Vala, because I think they chose Vala. And here we go. Blue team's going back on bottom. Even if Vala and Vala dies, there we go. Okay, that was a good job by Blue team. They survived the onslaught. But here comes Blue team. They're going for it. Oh, they're going for it. Red team needs to heart back. There they go. They're going, but they have. I think does he have Odin? I mean, drill, no, no drill. Oh, nice stun, but he's unstoppable. There's, oh, uh, right now, stun gets couple of them. goes down, oh no, oh no. Oh, they're dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what killed it? Was it Ragnaros just pounding away from afar? Oh, GG. Oh, GG, what a comeback. It was the boss throw. That was it. The boss throw turned everything around. Lucio for 6k healing. Adam 49. Lenara with 34k damage. But Tychus. Tychus. Nice. Vala. Four kills. She Last time I checked, she had like 100 something stacks. Not massive, but... I mean, enough to get four kills. Get the job done. Lenara with five, three Raymay. Red team had the macro, but then they had the boss throw and just turned around after that because Lava Wave kept them in the game. Lava Wave just kept them in the game. All right. So it is 1-0 in favor of the Gs. All right, so while we're waiting for the next um, map, let's look at the tournament. Here we go. We got the uh, number three and number four. I mean, number three and four. Number four and the number five playing each other. Cheese counter skills versus creepy crawl spiders. Um, they will play the winner of Fountain Snipers and Cosmos, and they're playing right now. And actually, Fountain Snipers is one game up. So let me see if I could um, update this up. Where is the bracket? Fountain Snipers is up one. And these is up one also. Okay, so the winner of those two games will face each other in the semifinals. And if you are not aware, semifinals is best of five. Quarterfinals, which is this match, is still only best of three. So, um, Creepy Crawl of Spiders is fighting for their season. They need to win this game to stay alive. So this next game could be the last game for their season or the first game of a reverse sweep. We will see. We will see. And on the other side of the bracket, we have Maximum Thrust um, beating out LTK. We hate OBJ and a domination there. Nice. Especially considering LTK We Hate OBJ was ranked number two. And um, Maximum Thrust was number seven. So we have an upset there. A 2-0 upset. So far in th these two matches, looks like the high ranked is winning. So maybe no upsets in these two. But we still have several, two games maybe to play. Let's have to wait and play. I still haven't seen anything of what the game next map will be.
What are they going to do? Well, while we're waiting, um, let's talk of which maps they will not go to. Um, the bands were um, the red team first banned Infernal Shrines. The blue team, the other CCS team, banned out Volskaya Factory. So no robots tonight. The second ban by the red team took out Towers of Doom, which is one of my favorite ones because it can go either way, all the way to the very end. But red team said nope. And the last band for the blue team is Cursed Hollow. One of the oldest maps in HOTS. We are not playing it. And... Alright. I am going to... Try to ask him where... We are going to the game too. So while I go do that, um, let's watch some videos. Necromancers hold a belief that all creation exists in a delicate balance between light and darkness. Should either side gain control, the world of Sanctuary would fall into ruin. As a member of their ancient order, Zul fights to preserve that balance, no matter where his travels may take him or what foes stand against him. Zul is a close quarters specialist who weakens his enemies and raises the undead to aid him in battle. Rise in my service. Zul's trait is Raise Skeleton. When a nearby enemy minion dies, Zul will raise a skeleton warrior to push alongside him. The Necromancer can have multiple skeleton warriors active at once. His first basic ability is Spectral Scythe. After a brief delay, Zul summons a ghostly scythe at range that returns to his location, dealing moderate damage to all enemies within its path. Next, Zul is able to empower his melee weapon to deal cursed strikes. Once activated, Zul's scythe will deal area damage for a short duration with every basic attack while simultaneously reducing the attack speed of all heroes hit. Zul's E ability is Bone Prison. When cast on an enemy, following a short delay, Zul summons a cage of bone that roots its target. Zul's base kit includes an activated ability on the one key, Bone Armor. Once activated, Zul gains a temporary shield. This ability is customized at the level one talent selection to either deal damage, slow, or evade basic attacks. Zul's first heroic option is Poison Nova. After a brief windup, Zul releases a wave of poison missiles that radiates outward for a significant distance. All targets hit by the poison will suffer a large amount of damage over a long period of time. For more battleground control, Zul can call upon a host of undead skeletal mages. Once activated, Zul will summon a group of undead mages in a straight line that will damage and slow nearby enemies. Never doubt my skill. Zul's passive, Ray's Skeleton, is a huge boon to lane control, making the Necromancer a powerful pushing force. Clear large waves with the help of your minions and push down objectives when you have the extra health bars supporting you. Use Spectral Scythe as a means to work in extra damage from afar. Strategize your position both before and after casting this ability to reap maximum target damage out of the Scythe's travel path. 
Cursed Strikes is of course a fantastic tool for clearing minions in lane and dealing significant damage to grouped up opponents, but its ability to counter high attack speed heroes is important to keep in mind. When facing off against auto attack heroes, seize available opportunities to cover them with this ability. Your team will benefit greatly from the decrease in damage. Bone Prison is Zul's only option for hero lockdown. Use this ability to help your team secure kills, or to punish a squishy assassin that enjoys overextending. The delay built into this ability awards its target a few precious moments for escape, so consider using it earlier than later. And definitely don't forget Bone Prison's potential to help a teammate in need. If you find yourself in the middle of fights often and looking for that extra damage, Poison Nova is the heroic option for you. Casting this ability while up close and personal with an enemy team will ensure the whole group takes on the damage. Poison Nova is a great counter to have ready when facing a dive-heavy team anxious to pounce. On the other hand, if you prefer to play a game of control, consider Skeletal Mages as a fitting heroic choice. Position the ability near your enemies to impede any option of escape. Hello, hello. We are ready for game two. We are going Tomb of the Spider Queen. Um, this was picked by the blue team. Um, I believe so, because the red team has first pick, first ban. Oh, instant ban on Gul'dan. Instant. Didn't even really think about that. It took longer to find Gul'dan than to click on it. Oh, but blue team is thinking a little bit on this one. What will they do? All right. I want for someone to release Harrison Jones, the little Easter egg. I want the blue team, since it's on the blue side, it's on the left side, to release Harrison Jones. So for those who don't know what Harrison Jones Easter egg, on the left side of the boss in the top, if you click on the little gem, you'll see a little guy in a fedora hat climb down a rope and steal the gem and climb back on top. Who won the first game? Oh, I didn't update the score. Oh my gosh. Let me see. Let me update the score. There we go. CCS won the game. That's it. <laughs> the blue team won one nothing. My bad for not updating that. Anyway. Okay, so bands, we got Joanna on the left side and go down and Falstead. On the right side, so no globals. Plus that gone. And uh, oh, tank bands on the left side. Interesting. And Tychus insta pick on the right side. They definitely wanted um, that pretty quick. I guess he did too much damage on the on the first game. So Tychus has switched sides. Anduin and Vala. Okay. Anduin has switched sides too now. But Vala stays on the blue team. And Varian. Ooh. And Stuka. Okay. Taunt Varian and the Stuka Puddle. That is very obnoxious. Very, very obnoxious. Throw in maybe like a Tassadar Wall or a KT Root. And that guy's not going anywhere. Oh, I like it. I'm interested in what um, the red team is going to pick for their fourth fourth and fifth um, pick. And Savannah's, yeah, I think Savannah's is, is a good band on any map. That That's a nice band. I like that one. And on the red team, the Final ban. Let's see. Tank ban, maybe? Diablo's there. Murden's there. Ooh, Stitches. Gorge. Okay. Stitches Gorge with an Anduin pull. Followed with a Light Bomb. Could have um, 
spelled some trouble there. But not tonight. Not tonight. All right, so who are they going to take as their um, tank? Toronto. Oh, double here with Diablo. Oh, yeah. I love it. Double healer. Anduin and Taronda. Oh, they got some CC on the left side. Oh, I like it. Oh, that's going to um, help on the taunt variant. Ooh, within tomb though. But you have the Anduin for the pull. And the Lunara for the damage. Okay. All right. So who's going to be... Double tag, double healer. The hyper, hyper carry. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is how you play NGS playoffs. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. I like the blue team's draft. Oh, okay. So I guess... Tyrael's gonna be in off lane versus Leoric. Okay, unless they do a three-two with Tyrael and and Taranda TNT in one lane and the other three double soaking. Oh, I don't know. I'm interested to see what they're they're gonna do here. But, you know, style points on the portrait synergy there. All right. On the left team, left team, the left side, um, the blue team, we have Dark Horse and Bala, Ticker on Tyriel, Seven on Andrin, Groot Champ on Trande, and honestly on Diablo. And on the right side, we have Osprey on Varian. Cordona on Tychus, Oxalium on Stukov, Gib on Lunara, and Plumera Meteo on Leoric. Ah, let's see. Lion Small, Quarterback, Low Blue, Sentinel Wisp, Nelson Renewal, Auto Attack, Arden Restoration, Two Shot Aura, Soul Shield, and Anduin is thinking, thinking, thinking. What does he want? There we go, light well. Okay. So heal while you're not there. Alright, Tyrael, offlane Tyrael is ready to go on bottom. Oh, Diablo is so slowed, but the Stukov um, Puddle missed. So he's okay, he's okay. They're killing for the spider butts. Yeah, wondering why I call them spider butts. Because if you look at the spiders, you kill them, um, their butts fall off. And that's what the uh, team picks up to collect in. It's their spider butts. And so far, they're even on spider butts. 6-6. Six, six. Blue team is getting camps. Leoric is bullying Tyrael. Diablo's trying to get the soak up top. My team is pushing mid. Terio and Vala is slowly getting it, getting their camps. Red team is looking for a gank on Diablo, but he's okay. Red team hasn't started their camps. Red team's got the slide advantage lead because blue team went for camps. What can they do with this camp now? Looks like their blue team's doing a 1 3 1. Diablo top. Oh, wait, nope. Blue team is rotating for camps on bottom, but was spotted by Learc, I think. He now knows it. But there's three on bottom. Terrell goes in. Terrell goes in, but he's okay. Two shot aura is going to help Vala. Vala's got 22 stacks. He's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. Yep, Diablo is going to stay top and Tyrael is going to stay bottom, and the other three are going to rotate. 
rotate as needed. Well, no, as I say that. Okay, Tyrion's turning in. Oh, Varen goes in. He's got his taunt, but missed. And uh, low, low blow to zone him out. All right, Tyrion turned his in. Yeah, they are definitely doing a one three one. Varen's looking for a taunt, but Anduin spots him out. Nice. I like blue team is not face checking except for Ragnaros. They are checking the bushes. Diablo has not left the top lane since the early skirmish. It's not going to check. Doesn't care if they're a blue team. I mean, if the red team is going to turn in. No one's got enough um, spider butts to turn in for an objective. Blue team's turning in on the bottom. All right, red team finally got their camp. Everyone just poking, 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 waiting for someone to get out of position. Both teams are doing good job. Just picking up Soak, running back to the towers. Pick up Soak, run back to the towers. Blue team is not giving the red team anything. Oh, there's the Tonto! Where's the low blow? Oh, low blow misses, but Edwin still pulled him out. Tyrell comes in. Here comes Diablo. Okay, Tyrell went top now. Tyrell went top. No one's getting bottom. Diablo's getting, going to the middle. It's looking for a flip. Both team has enough for a turn in. Tyrell could be in trouble. Where's the taunt? Oh, low blow misses. Taunt though. Oh, he's got it. Oh, four hit points. Oh, nice peel by Tyrell and Diablo. Oh. Varian, he's okay. Tyrion, the yellow is not going to kill him. Follows the hyper hyper carry. No one cares about the bottom. Tyr oh, nice slip by the yellow, but there's no one there. He's okay. He's okay. I mean, there's no kill pressure unless Vala's wrong. But there's Vala. There's Vala. Where's the flip? Nice flip. There's a low blow, and there's a Toronto gets the kill. Nice, Baron's down. First blood, five minutes into it, and blue team is turning in. Blue team is scary when they're together. Diablo's going for another. There's a flip, and blue team's not there. Blue team's not there. Lenar's doing so much damage, and there's a low blow. Oh, but there's no no follow up. All right, experience level is pretty even. Structural wise, red team's got a little advantage, but blue team's got the objective. Blue team is coming in. There's the taunt on Diablo. Where's the low blow? There it is, but nothing, nothing. Here comes the objective. They want Vala. Nice, nice, nice peels. Nice peels for the blue team. This will give a little breathing room. Take out the middle objective. Diablo's looking for a bad rotation. Right. They got the little vision there by Lunara. All right. Blue team. Oh, nice taunt on Vala. Vala! But the peel by Diablo. Nice. Nice. The double healing's keeping Vala alive. All right. That's first axe for Vala. All right, objective didn't do a whole lot. That was nice defense by the red team. Nice, nice, nice. All right, nice stall. Baron's gonna try to turn in on the bottom or look. There's the two one Vala. Oh, there's the Todd mentions. Terry stops him with the judgment. Oh, excellent peel. Nice job. They almost had um, Vala there, but they might get the turn in. There's the Taunt on Diablo. Protect the turn in. There's the turn in. Pick up with the swipe, swipe, swipe. To zone him out. Okay, lots of alts used on the left side. There's the Taunt and the low blow! Low blow! And Lanara finishes it off. And Tychus pops Odin with the objective. I think this mid fort is in trouble. 
Blue Team still has the tank, though. I mean, they have Diablo coming back, but he's got no souls left. Tyrrell tries to hearth right in the middle of everyone. Ficus goes, no, I don't think so. All right, Odin is gone already, but the objective is there. Oh, maybe this fort is not dead. Nice defense. Top fort is in trouble. Oh, and yep, there goes. First fort of the game goes down. Bottom fort is a little bit in trouble too. And I think that's going down too. Blue team is sticking together. Oh, nope, there goes Tyrael. Tyrael's got 40. He's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. Bottom objective is still pushing. They got the, look at that, one level lead. All right, blue team's looking for a fight. Before our red team gets 13s. Alright, finally this objective is going down. What do we got? Yeah, it did a lot of damage there. Red team definitely got more value out of the objective than blue team. Red team has enough for a turn in there. There you go, as soon as Learth turns us in, it's gonna be we got and one to spare for Learth. Oh, they're invading! Blue team is not fast enough. Tyrael, you need to get there. There's the Tonal Vala. Nice pull by Anduin. There's Diablo. Oh, they're starting the back line. Can they do anything? Oh, the light bomb gets two, but still comes to swipe some out. Blue team gets the cap, though. Blue team gets the cap. Oh, nice. Nice disengage. The Entombment, the um, grenade, pushed them back. But red team got the objective. There's the ton on Diablo, and then now jumps in. There's the low blow, and then her again finishes it off. Oh, she held her last R for the longest of time. She jumped in once, waited for low blow to get Diablo down, and then she used her last R to finish it off. Nice, nice, nice. And with Terriel down and um, Odin popped, this fort is going down. Um, Varian's looking for a taunt. Ball is up top, got to clear. She's the only DPS that can clear. That's the bad part about blue team's comp. Without Vala, they don't have much kill pressure. All right, everyone's resetting. Blue team's got enough for a turn in, but I don't think red team's going to give it to them. So now the question is, the red team going to do another boss throw? I'm guessing they're not. But blue team's going to check to make sure. I mean, red team knows that they're there because they walked right through the minions. Here they come. Here they come. It's a trap, though. It's a trap. Nice grenade by um, Tychus. No face checking. No face checking. All right. Trap failed. Trap failed. And red team's got a siege giants walking the core. No, oh, Tyrell just barely made it out of there. All right, Diablo's full souls again, so he's a beefy boy. And since blue team didn't want the boss, red team says, thank you very much. Fought it out, but nothing, nothing they can do. No boss throw this game. Not yet, anyway. Hero still has to clean this up. The team's got to be careful. Because here they come. Tyrael's still not there. My team wants to stop deep. Fowler's only got 75 on their stacks. All right, here we go. 5v5. Odin's popped. Red team's just poking. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Taunt it on. Oh, but the sound. Okay, yeah. It's all the material. Now Vala. Vala and Tyrael looks kind of like the same. All right. They, they got the keep. That's all the red team wanted. They would have liked the kill, but... Nothing happened there. Tyrell went back to the bottom line to clear. The team still doesn't have enough for a turn in, but. Oh, they're flanking. They're flanking. Oh, there's Lenar again. Oh, enough. Tychus kills him. Oh, Thronda down. And there's the light bomb. Gets two. And the. Uh, oh, in tomb. Oh, the Diablo Pokemon's not enough to stall him out. Bo's running for a life. Makes it. Oh, but he lost so much DMs, but they had so many to start with. Oh, but, oh, red team's got to turn in. Blue team is not going to be able to turn in. They're not allowed. Not allowed. Red team's got firm control of this game. All right. Both supports are coming back. They'll be here for the defense. But red team's got the camp, too. They got another staggered death. This could be game. Red team's... Oh, there's the taunt! Oh, the silence misses! Oh, Diablo goes in! With Terio! Oh, but where's Vala? There's the light bulb! But there's the Entomb! Diablo's going down! Oh, no! And the Entomb drops him! Oh, but he gets out! Oh, Vala, no! Hyperbolic... Vala's back line! Oh, but no! The healers weren't near the fall. Fall takes out two, but the healers were in the back. Oh, they have no damage now, and the objectives are in the core. Oh, that was a nice try by the blue team, but this is GG's. Spiders in the core. Diablo Apocalypse misses. Animan's doing the best to heal him, but GG. 15 minute game. Alright, that ties it up. Oh, I mean, she had damage everyone, 37k, but could not confirm enough kills. Tigus with 31k. Lenara, well, man. She was just jumping all over the place. 27k. She got four kills and zero deaths. Two deaths for Varia and Tychus. And that's it. I mean, Anduin had 27k healing. Toronto 33k healing. Duca had 44k. Oh, double tank, double sport. Didn't quite work out too well. But that means we got game three. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Game three, we are tied up. This is what playoffs should be. All right. So while we are waiting, let's go back to the tournament bracket. Because. As we can see, as soon as I update it, not only are we in a game three, so is the other team that they're facing. There's one one here. So both um, games are going game three. And the winners of each one will face each other. So that that's a good matchup there. Exciting games in NGS tonight. And as we see, whoever picked the map lost. <laughs> so I would imagine that they would pick first pick. Um, I guess that would be Creepy Crawl of Spiders. If the trend continues, they should pick first pick. And let the cheese pick the map.
But they're thinking about it. They're thinking, do we want... Um, do we want first pick, first pen, and if we get the map, what map do we want to pick? Okay, I still don't see. Okay, while we are waiting, let's go watch more videos. Corrupted by demons, bent on conquest, some driven by the lust for power, others for the pure thrill of destruction. Chogal, a rare two-headed ogre, was the first and most powerful of the Horde's ogre magi. Now he's here, and the Nexus will never be the same. Chogal is a terrifying force on the battlefield, someone who can start and end a fight all on his own but only if both heads work together. Two players, two heads, sharing one body. Unusual limitations coupled with exciting new gameplay experiences. Communication will be essential. The player who picks Cho is in command of movement for both players and thus responsible for keeping the brothers in position to damage enemies. Cho's first ability is Surging Fist. Chogal lunges forward, knocking aside enemies in his path. Use this ability for picking off isolated heroes or escaping while outnumbered. This is Chogal's primary tool for initiation, so make sure your partner and teammates are prepared to back you up. Cho's second ability, Consuming Blaze, can burn down multiple enemies at once. Not only does it initiate fire damage in a wide area, but if an enemy is burned, Chogal will be healed over a short duration. Cho's final basic ability, Rune Bomb, requires teamwork. When activated, Cho hurls an orb of dark magic in a straight line, but it's your companion player, controlling Gaul, who has to finish the job. Gaul's runic blast will cause the Rune Bomb to explode along its path. A failed attempt at this exchange, however, results in little damage done. With good timing, Chogal can quickly clear minion waves and even snipe heroes outside of melee range. While Cho maneuvers on the battlefield, Gaul unleashes powerful spell damage to wear down and finish opponents. Gaul's Q, Shadow Flame, is a skill shot that fires a bolt of shadow magic in a straight line. It has a very low cooldown, so use this liberally to burn down enemies in range. Gaul's final basic ability is Dread Orb. A Sphere of Agony is launched in a straight line, bouncing twice and causing damage to whatever it touches. The length of the orb's bounces can be controlled by the initial launch distance chosen by Gaul. Bounces will go farther when launched further away and shorter when launched closer. Though Gaul can't control movement directly, he has a way to help motivate things. <laughs> Gaul's Z ability isn't a normal mount, but rather a burst of speed to help the pair escape from danger or chase down fleeing targets. Now let's talk about Chogal's heroic abilities. Cho's first heroic is Hammer of Twilight. This legendary weapon adds a major increase to all basic attack damage, while also providing an AoE cleave that damages, knocks back, and stuns all enemies in range. Gaul's first heroic is Shadow Bolt Volley. Once activated, a storm of shadow damage streams out for several seconds wherever the player is aiming. Cho's second heroic is Upheaval. After a brief delay, nearby enemy heroes are yanked into point-blank range, opening them up to devastating area damage, such as Gaul's second heroic, Twisting Nether. When activated, Gaul channels a field of dark energy that slows all nearby enemies. When activated again, it explodes, dealing massive damage. 
Togal is unique among the heroes we've introduced thus far, and will require an unusual amount of cooperation with another player to use him to his full potential. Your team will be rewarded with two kills instead of one should you manage to bring him down. It's a two-edged sword. With great communication and coordination, Cho'Gal will feel like you've recruited a World of Warcraft raid boss to your team. However, with poor synergy, your team will miss significant opportunities. If you happen to find yourself up against Cho'Gal, do not try to take him on alone. He has a very high health pool and a lot of damage at his disposal, so bring your allies when challenging him in battle. Time to unleash some chaos! Chagall's path of destruction is underway. It's time to find out once and for all whether two heads are better than one. Make sure to subscribe to Heroes of the Storm here on YouTube, and we'll see you in the Nexus. Okay, game three of the Division D West quarterfinals between CCS versus CCS, Creepy Call Spiders versus Cheese Counter Skills. We are all tied up 1-1, one, one, game three. Yay, I like it. We are going to Brax's holdout. Uh, we first pick first Ben on the red team. And again... Go down as first ban. They are definitely targeting um, the blue team's DPS. They don't want cooldown ever, ever in any of these matches, in any of the playoffs. Not allowed. Blue team, meanwhile, does not want. Who do they not want? A new wreck. Okay. They did tank bans the second game. Ragnaros. Okay. No I guess I mean I don't I personally don't like Lava Wave in this map because it does nothing to the Zerg. I mean it literally does nothing to the Zerg. I mean you got the D which will help battle it, but I don't know. That's just me, I guess. All right. Blue team, second ban, uh, Joanna. I I mean, they banned a lot of tanks in this match so far. Oh, Varian. Ooh, nice. Respect ban there. No more tank Varian for you. But that leaves Joanna up. That leaves Joanna up. Do they want him? Or do they want her? And they decide, yep, can't pass up on the Blonde Warrior. All right, but Stukov is up also. At least Stukov. Surely you're not going to get blue and um, red team Stukov two games in a row. But maybe they will. They're thinking about it. Meridian and Andrin. Yep, they didn't care about um, Stukov. They figured, well, if you drop that portal, Andrin will just pull him out. No big deal. They did get some value with Stukov in the second game. Not a whole lot of value, but a little bit. Oh, thank you for the follows, Wits and, and GM Saika. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the two followers tonight. I hope you're enjoying this game three. Excitement, excitement. Where we have Orphea. Orphea, okay. I like uh, the red team's draft. Just because you don't see Orphea too often. And Learic. Learic is good. And he's an off laner. He's got that nice um, AoE damage. But the wave clear and the Zerg clear. I like... And the Joanna, so red team's got a pretty good draft so far. And there you go, you're going to ban Stukov. You don't want the Entomb with the Stukov Silence, which equals Leoric's level 20 Silence Entomb. You don't want that happening at level 10. No, might as well ban out Stukov. 
a lot of good healers though. There's Rhaegar, there's Decker. Oop, Vala's gone. Okay, Vala was in the first two games. Not gonna show up for the final match. Final game of this match. Alright, so blue team needs damage and offlaners. Uh, Blaze. Blaze is good. You get that bunker. You could potentially save someone from the entomb. What do they want? Ooh! Phoenix! Oh my gosh, when was the last time? Oh, Mephisto! Okay, now I like Mephisto, but Phoenix? Oh my gosh, I have not seen Phoenix in the longest of time. Okay. But I, I love Mephisto. I love Mephisto. We'll see how Phoenix goes in. I mean, he's got good AoE. It'll help against the Zerg. Maybe that's why they banned Varian, so you don't have that shield stop. Okay, Rhaegar and Raynor. Okay. So who is going to be the offlane for the blue team? I still like Blaze. Could be Murky last pick. Yeah, let's go Murky! <laughs> oh, no fun. No fun. Diva. Okay, D Diva's a good solid pick. But Murky would have been extreme! It would have been the best game ever! This is you know, someone's last game of NGS. Why not go out with a bang? And we're loading, loading, loading. Here we go, loading. All right, game three. Who is hyped for this? Division D West quarterfinals. Last game for someone. We have the blue team. Um, the cheese counter skills. Dark Horse on Mephisto. Tickor on Diva. Seven on Anduin, Groove Champ on Phoenix, Honestly on Muradin. And on the right side, on <laughs> switch, swapping sides, we have Gib on Raynor, Cordona on Rhaegar, Primera Metio on Learch, Oxolium on Orphia, and Osprey on Joanna. All right, they are switching. Top man, four man going top. That's a Fear of Spark, Liquid Cooling, Even Handing Blessing, Advanced Targeting, Dwarf Block, Diva's okay, he's okay, Ace in the Hole, Colossal Totem, Lesson Renewal, and Point, and Zill's Glare. Alright, they got most of the tower and some gate, and Blue Team didn't get anything. Okay, Jason Lito says Phoenix can clear the entire objective by ulting with Planet Cracker. I agree, I have seen that YouTube videos on it, but I've never seen anyone actually do it live. So, I would love to see that happen here in NGS. I would love to see it. Alright, so Phoenix stayed on the bottom against Leoric and Diva stays up top. Very good, well, they're already there. Let's go ahead and stay. Red team's got a half a level lead. And looks like Diva is going to swap out. Or, yeah. At least Diva's leaving, but Phoenix is staying. This means three men on top, top of the blue team. And oh! Oh! Mephisto! Oh, with 80 hit points. Almost. Almost. All right, Phoenix is going back top. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Someone, someone needs to 
Get that objective. Even is all right. Leoric's gonna get it. The bottom. I don't think the blue team is gonna take the top back. Rainer's just going pew pew pew. All right, there goes the first points for the red. They're up to thirty percent already. I don't. Well, okay, there we go. They're going for it. Oh, Merton has to jump out. Joe is low, but he had to jump out. Rainer is going pew pew pew. Seven hit points. Merton survives. Seven hit points. Those block charges. Um, getting some value there. But red team is going to get the objective. 100% objective to zero. Nice route by Endman, but <laughs> this objective Zerg is pretty pathetic. Meanwhile, red team, that's impressive. They're going for a Learic, but I don't think Meridian's going to survive too long. He already used his jump. Oh my gosh. All right, Diva's going to use a bomb to try to clear some of the Zerg. Got a little bit of it. Red team is... is oh, they might get this fort. Alright. Blue team needs 10s. Mephisto's power, power spike is on level 4, but they gotta keep feeding her some um, some globes. And we'll see how well they do that. Alright, cancel taken! Red team's a little bit faster because they started first. They're getting that. And nice nice push check there for but someone's got to clear that because it's going to the top board all red team all five are on the bottom trying to gank diva she could be in trouble she could be in trouble she can be in trouble and she is in trouble nice um call there by the red team now diva out of position there's no way they were going to not get that, and they're going to get the bottom fort. Red team is not going to rotate fast enough. Nice macro calling by the red team. Oh, well, they saved the fort, though, but it's so low. Festo's doing his best, but... Still not enough. Oh, they did get the fort. They did, because they had that camp there. The camp does negative armor. Nice. Diva's doing the best. Clear. And red team is not going to do another boss. I don't think they're going to do another boss this match. Not after the first game with the boss throw. Yep, Diva got out of there as fast as can, but Mephisto could be... Oh! I was going to say, Mephisto was all by herself there. Alright. 5v4 on the top. Diva's got to go back to the bottom. Losing Soak. Alright, blue team's got some... Got the top objective, but... Oh! Yo, was, oh, Mephisto needs to work a little bit on the placement there. But Joe could be in trouble. Oh, uh, unstoppable. It's okay. Yeah, see, that's not a good spot for Mephisto. Oh my gosh, she's like in plain view in front of everybody. Oh no, she should have been back here. She should have been right here. Should have been right here. And... My team's got the top objective. But Merton's gonna jump in. Here we go. Nice stun, but it's Learic. Does he have a spooky walk? Does he have a spooky walk? Nope. But that's not enough to kill him. But they got the bottom objective, so... No time for the red team. Oh, no! Phoenix was teleports away just in time. Okay, Mephisto is doing some damage, but... Oh, Meridian jumps in! There's nice stun! Andrea! The root! Oh! Nice! Coronation there! Stun of Meridian! Root by Anduin! Kill by Phoenix! Nice! Nice! And they stopped the objective. But red team gets 20. Diva's got a clear. Lane is so pushed back. 
What can the blue team do with one man dead? Experience is pretty even, but red team's gonna get tens first. Diva's doing her best, but Anna's gonna come in to try to help. Yep, Learic's gotta run away because they saw Anduin thinking, oh, there could be more people there. Mephisto is just trying to clear. Anduin goes back top. Heals everybody. Tens are gonna be online. And they got both objective. There we go, ten. We got Hyperion, Ancestral, Entomb, Eternal Feast, and Blessed Shield. There's Hyperion. Are they going? Yep. I think they're they want this top fort. Alright, both forts are gone. Murder has to jump out. There's the shield! You get so many! Oh, but the pull by Anduin! Oh! Avatar popped on Meriden, but he's still low. He's got five. Oh! His jump was interrupted! His jump was interrupted! And Rainer j just burns him down. He didn't get his block charge, I don't think, because it was interrupted. I assume he doesn't get it if it doesn't complete. Oh, that was beautiful by the red team. And they get the camp before the objective completes. They got the camp and a nice big Zerg wave. All right. Oh, but tens. The ends of hate. Micro, uh, micro missile. Well, no bunny hop. Interesting. Holy world salvation. Planet cracker and avatar. There's the bomb. Clear, clear some zerg. The first is clearing some waves. They got lots of AOE. Oh, nice pushback by Rainer. Nice peel. Nice peel. Phoenix did the thing, yeah, I missed it though. Are they they're invading, they're invading. Here we go. 5v5. Mephisto's doing so much damage, but then Tomb on Diva, but she doesn't care. Eternal Feast! Oh, it's a light shield by Anduin healing everybody! Oh, but is it enough? He's in trouble. Murden goes down! Anduin goes down! Oh! Phoenix warps out! Oh, not enough. If Diva had the bomb there, that would, would have helped. But she used it up top on the Zerg wave. Oh, and he didn't use Endurance of Hate. Did it just come up? Was that gone? And boss is taken. This could be a keep. Four man's going up top. Rainer has no fear. Rainer has no fear. Endurance of hate to stole him out. Oh, no. Oh. oh, I mean, you rooted. You got a lot of root on that one, but there was no teammates with you. Oh, Phoenix. 40 hit points. Oh, clutch healed by Anduin there. Oh, this keep is gone with the boss. Down. Oh, the shield and the eternal feast. God, oh, there's a low Anduin. Oh, okay. Morgan was able to peel him. But the boss is still healthy. The boss is healthy. Red team is getting camps. We got 15 seconds before the objective's up. Nothing to do but get camps. Blue team's going to clear the boss. But they did lose the top keep. All right. Is the team going to clear or are they going to go? They're going. For, they're going. New York is running away. Smart move. Step on the point. Oh, you're late. Step on the point. You gave him 6%. Okay. Red team doesn't want to fight. They go, oh, maybe not. Here they come. They took the camp and they're they want the point back. They want the point. Diva's hiding in the bush. Diva sees him. But there's the flank. Oh, shield on Phoenix! He can't warp out! 
Oh, Phoenix deleted. And this eternal feast. Oh, Mephisto deleted. Oh, they didn't need the entomb. There's the diva bomb, but does she have to, yeah? Can she get out of there? Oh, okay. She's okay. But the damage dealers are gone on the blue team. Red team, they want, they're going to push the bomb keep. They got the objective. Nothing thing, nothing the blue team can do. I pair them used and I think all keeps are going to be gone. Oh, no, they saved it. Diva's going in. They want Joanna, but Joanna's Joanna. You can't kill Joanna that easy. Oh, there it is. Didn't quite get the right angle. The best angle is up here as they walk out. So he got a little bit on the back. Phoenix didn't have time to set up correctly. Oh! Oh, shield on Phoenix just obliterated him. This could be game. This could be game. We got a big old Zerg wave. Man advantage, talent advantage. All right, there goes the keep. Nice stun. Murden could be in trouble. Jumps out. Oh, Mephisto could be in trouble. Oh, but makes it in. Phoenix is back, but is it enough? Diva lost her mech. Oh, it's going down 90%, 80%, 75%. Oh, Murden's down. Uh, this is GG. Anduin with the heals. Anduin heals, but it's down 12%. Raiders down. Oh, GG. GG. And CCS wins. Creepy crawl spiders specifically. Alright, look at this. Orphia, 50k. I love it. 50k, look at that. First of it, 48k. Kept up with it, but died three times versus Orphia with zero deaths. Leoric did a good job soaking. Rainer, look at this. Rhaegar, 72k. Healing. Andman, even with the uh, light bubble, healing. Couldn't keep up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. Let me see if I can get um, an interview. With one of the members of CCS. Okay, so um, we got a 2 1 win. Okay, let me see. I can't seem to find anyone. Hello, hello. Hey. All right, we got two members here. We have Cordana and Auxilium. Welcome, welcome. Hello. GG's. Thank you. GG's. Yes, it was first, a lot of fun. First of all, thank you for three games. <laughs> I love three games. Yes, whatever we're, we're happy wants. to entertain. <laughs> you did. You did well on the entertainment side. All right, so first let's talk about the first game. First game, you went to um, Sky Temple, which was your choice. Any yes. specific reason uh, you picked Sky Temple? Well, we saw that they, that they 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 had never played it, and we um we have a decent track record on it. From, we have a decent track record on it, uh, but mostly we knew that we out macroed them as a team, based mm. off our previous match. So we we just wanted maps where we could use macro to our advantage, and Sky mm. Temple was just the first one on our list, and we didn't pick Tomb because we f expected them to. Uh, which was nice. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> this was actually my first cast of Sky Temple. It's like, wow. 
I've never oh, seen it. Oh, really? Yes, this season? Uh, not that yeah, popular. Not this season. this season. It's either hmm. banned or just completely ignored. So, thank you, I guess, because <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen it. But all right it was a uh, at the you, you were actually winning but then at the boss is, is where they turned it yeah. around yeah the, the big momentum so, changed there it was it was a uh it was just it, a black it was, uh, making to yeah so like, we were split we were split point. on targets yeah too many people on targets. our side jumped on the jumped on the point and we... we weren't talking like we we were all pressing buttons but none of us were talking that specific <laughs> fight and yeah yep that they had some, kind of just some good fights after that too and we just uh got a bit frantic and yeah. right but you, you brought it back in game two and you said you wanted tomb of the spider queen and they gave it to you yeah, we, yeah. we saw that they had played it like three times in the season and they had been the ones to pick it every time. So we'd kind of just in advance, it's like, all right, we're probably playing Tomb from first yeah. pick. Not and a, planning not for a that is. Uh, against, so. <laughs> yeah, plan, planning from that was pretty nice. Were you surprised? I think we had a pretty good record on Tomb this season, too, actually. Were you surprised with their draft? Double support and double tank? Um. Well, we knew something was going to happen with. We we were curious with, what Groove Champ would do after we banned him out. That banned them out, and yeah. as a result, it's like okay, it's pro. It might we know they played one game of Hanzo all season, so it might be the Hanzo. They definitely need wave clear, and then they pick the Tyrande, which is like okay, hyper carry Vala, but you have no wave clear, and then they pick Tyrael, yeah. which theoretically, when with us not having a cleanse, they can absolutely like dive the Stuke off with it, but. Mm -hmm. Tyrael also has no wave clear. Yeah, they so, they definitely did not have a ton of wave clear for a very macro heavy map. It seemed. Yeah, so were, every like, time we got an things. advantage, it was just. Uh, yeah. Os had just a really a good, of... really good calls and and comp that game too, like just calling rotations and like where he was waiting, a lot of like bush yeah. positions and just getting like it was, it was really good. Was cool game. After some of the uh, the miscommunications we had game one, everyone on the team was super disciplined. Uh, game yes. two, about <laughs> communication and positioning and telling everyone what they were doing. And that's yeah. what why we looked so tight game two and three when we didn't necessarily game one. Yeah, we pulled it together, did a really good job, everybody. Yes, I did notice your rotations were really nice. You were we're not out of position and you always pick the fight that you wanted yes that was that was the goal going into it so on game three Brax's holdout i we were was not was... happy for this oh, it, was, it was interesting <laughs> i we... called it before before they picked too we, we were looking and it's like well they might they're, they're probably gonna we expected them to take first pick, so we were going through, do we play Dragonshire, do we play Garden, and we're going through the heroes we've seen them play, and we were just strategizing yeah. for those two maps, depending on what we wanted to pick, and then they just throw Braxis at us, and five minutes yeah. of discussion went out the window. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay, well, uh, <laughs> new plan. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, and then we had, a we had like, a complete change in draft to that game as well. Um, they... Because uh, they picked the Phoenix. Which, uh, which was our pocket pick. Yeah, which originally, yeah. Oh, so, so uh, you think they picked this map specifically for Phoenix? No, it's... Uh, it's... No, it was just what we were planning on playing as well. So we kind of like, switched oh, off. Uh, gotcha. The Orphea pick was not the, the original, the original plan. plan. But your Orphea was, was incredible. <laughs> oh, thank you. I loved your Orphea. <laughs> like, yeah, I it's do, always great. It's like the one damage I play. Well, not the I play a couple. I think I've I've played a couple on the team, but yeah, it's my pocket pick damage. <laughs> it came in handy there. I mean, you had fifty k damage there, out damage even Mephisto. I thought Mephisto might have been the um, the wild card if he got on track. Mm -hmm. um, he could have done so much damage, but you kept burning him down. You did a really good job. Uh, yeah, we just, oh, really good comps that came too, and just making sure we were paying attention to 
rotating which lanes we were in and getting the point, getting camps, all that sort of stuff. So you move on to the semifinals against Fountain Snipers. They just won their Snipers. match. Yes, we do. They, yeah, that makes okay. sense. They, they were up against Cosmos, right? Yeah. Okay. One versus eight. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it went a third game also. They won two to oh. one. Yeah. Awesome. Wow, that's like great. So they in exciting games. Uh I know. <laughs> Div D. Division D is the Wild Wild West. Yeah. No, D Div D West has been the most balanced Div I have yeah. ever been a part of in NGS, and I've played seven seasons total, I think. Eight people Eight? teams have been losing to like every team, like just randomly. No nobody's been like really dominating the entire season. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. All right. Uh I'd have to say both Division D and Division C are balanced. Because Div C was pretty much the same thing where everyone was balanced in the first top eight. So I've been really excited casting both C and D is like, all right, game three again. I love it. <laughs> so hopefully um, all the semifinal matches will also be, oh, it's it's five games. Best of five, just in case you're yes. not aware. Okay. Because I, I told uh, another match last night, semifinals, best of five. Like, what? Yeah, that was a surprise to me as well when I found out. Yeah. From here on out, it's best of fives. Well, that just means we'll play three games again for semis. Right. Oh. <laughs> All right, you heard it here. Let's Called go. out. <laughs> Creepy call. I mean, um, Old lines. Right. Uh, it's going to be best of three. I mean, 3-0 three -oh sweep. 3-0 yep. oh sweep. All right. Found snipers. Gotta get right. your game on. <laughs> well, thanks for the cast. Do you want yes, any... thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Is there any shout outs before we end it? Cordona? Oh, me? Oh, sure. Well, the CCS community as a whole, especially when your opponent is a CCS team, kind of yes. needs to be mentioned. <laughs> uh, a lot of fun. It's been, yeah, having three CCS teams in one division has been an experience this season because you keep everyone's like checking it's like okay how's the other ccs team doing yeah. how's the other other ccs team doing and you know um, each other so well pretty much yeah uh yeah and yeah. i think shout out to of course gib and os and uh Mateo yeah, for being gib, amazing who's playing, and lovely yes gib who is on playing with the <laughs> Very yeah. sick, still joined us. Oh my gosh, how he feels better. Uh, yeah. Yes, he probably passed yeah, he, immediately. Yeah, three <laughs> games with being sick is unpleasant, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah, uh, and thank you again for casting. Yes, thank you. It was fun. Thank you for three games. <laughs> All right. Have All a right. good night. Good night. Good night. Cheers, cheers. All right, that will end our Division D West quarterfinals. CCS versus CCS with CCS winning. And so I think we're the last game this tonight. So I will just end it here. And until next time, um, I will see you in the Nexus. Good night, everyone. Thank you for watching.